<laughs> so what do we got going on here today? Well, you know what happens this week? Yes, it's the Trumple County Fair. Yay! Everybody's busiest week of the calendar. And Mary and I are both big uh, fairaholics. Yes, definitely. <laughs> many, many hours and many, many miles dealing with fairs. Yes. So we're going to run down there today and we're going to look at the old schoolhouse that I kind of helped take care of and do it before we get the massive crowds. Well, it's hard to do some of these things when you want to kind of focus when there's a lot of people around. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's good for us to take a quiet step back into history yeah. um, to see what the school was like. So we are going to fire up the mobile, but the dog is staying here today. Yes, yes. she will not get to go to school. No. <laughs> not today. <laughs> That's okay, she's got stuff to do here. So. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, let's get on the road. Let's load her up. Look at how quiet this is, Nancy. Well, this is what did I say, the calm before the storm? <laughs> oh, but it looks like there's some activity going on. I see portable bleachers. I see things with fun lights. I see big semis with all kinds of fun oh, lights. I, I think this is the Tilt-A-Whirl. The Tilt-A-Whirl. Ah. Ah. Nancy, where are we? We are at the Trempolo County Fairgrounds. The calm before the storm. Yeah. Oh, they must be doing a meeting. Do, do, do. Farm Progress Buildings got people. But we're not here today to look at the Farm Progress Day or building or the Lions building or to get a, a, a milkshake. milkshake or meat <laughs> on a stick. What are we doing down here today? Well, I thought we would just take a look inside the schoolhouse quickly. Like I say before, uh, the fair actually opened, so we got a little more time to look at everything that's inside. So behind me, oh, here's our brand new air conditioner. The one we had here before was pretty old. And uh, so we just went down and bought a new one at Menards. Uh, I know that that would not be something that would you, you would have found in a for real one room schoolhouse, but it can get pretty hot here at the fair. And so uh, when we have people, volunteers sitting here, it's nice to have you know, beside the fans going, maybe have a little air as well. But we're very proud to the, the crew that takes care of the fairgrounds for taking care of it and putting it in for us. Now here we have something that really fascinates people too, because this is something that people don't do anymore. And what it is, is a collection of stuffed birds, a lot of songbirds. You'd be surprised how many people sit here and try to uh, identify them. Because look what we have. We have we have an owl. We have a uh, we've got a tanager. We've got orioles. We have doves. 
and flickers and looks like a kingfisher. People have a lot of fun. And quail. And this is something that people I don't think would be legal to do anymore. But somebody did this. It said it was donated by a Mrs. Wade. And it doesn't say if this was something that she and her family did. But it's quite, uh, quite a piece of taxidermy. Yes, it is. Yeah. Much enjoyed by a lot of people. We like to try to identify all the birds. And this is just our one little case here where we identify, we have all the objects. We have the old xylophone. And uh, this was actually made by uh, Laura and Hollis Bibby. And she used it in her career as a music teacher. So that would be easier to move around than a piano, I guess. And of course they used ink. They had ink wells and ink pens. And this thing right here is actually, um, that was something that my ancestors, <laughs> the hunters used. They had been coal miners in Scotland before they came to Wisconsin. And this was what they used for light down in the coal mines. They would put a candle in it. So that was their old miner's candle lamp. So this is, we're down here, this is pre-fair, and we haven't really had a chance to come in here and do a lot of uh, dusting and cleaning. During the fair, it'll be better. And this was how the schools were heated. It was wood stoves. I imagine if you were out on the prairie, it would have been coal stoves. This was a common dinner pail. And I was told lots of times in the cold months, people would bring in, they'd have their food in jars and there would be a little water in these pans and then people could put their lunch in there and, and heat it up. Because nice. there wasn't a hot lunch program. I guess though in, in the later years, like schools that were open in the 60s and that, sometimes they would have hot meals brought out from town, from the district. But originally it was you brought your own. A lot of people remembered having lard sandwiches. It was a slice of bread with lard on it and they were pretty good. It's better than snowballs. Yeah. And then up here we have another thing that I'm sure the DNR would faint if they saw it. <laughs> That's an eagle, a stuffed eagle. Again, we don't really know where that came from. Yeah, they're big birds, aren't they? For punctual and regular attendance. That was a big deal back then. It was. It really was. Because everybody here was farming. Yeah. And this wood box is actually kind of pretty because look at the stenciling it had on it. Someone actually took the time to paint and stencil a wood box. Of course it does cost money to keep this schoolhouse repaired and, and running. Um, so we, we're happy to take donations. And we also, we have uh, copies of our book that has the history of the schoolhouse uh, of uh, Tremplow County. And we sell this down here as well, $20. And it's got history of all the one-room schools in the county. So we usually have uh, people that volunteer to come here and, and uh, you know, be like a schoolhouse monitor and they're in here to watch things during the fair and we greatly appreciate their help. But people enjoy it because we get a lot of kids but we get a lot of parents and grandparents in here and uh, a lot of the older folks they come in here and they they have very fond memories of their one-room schoolhouses. They really had good educations and the people that think that they were not getting a good education from those one-room schoolhouses, that, that wasn't so. 
I had many people tell me that when they had gone into town from their rural school that they were actually ahead in a lot of their studies than the kids in town. They also said the nice thing was that um, if you were an older child and maybe you were having some trouble in a subject, you, you could sit there and listen to the younger kids recite, you know, recite their lessons and that would be kind of a, a brush up for you. And for some of the younger kids that were really uh, like to study ahead, they listened to the older kids. And it wasn't that unusual for pupils to actually skip a grade. My mother skipped a grade. And it was, uh, she said it wasn't because she was so darn bright. It was because there were only two kids <laughs> in her grade, she and her cousin. And so the teacher just thought it would be easier to let them skip a grade. And then she put them with the next grade up. So she had more than just two kids <laughs> in the one grade. But they did that quite a bit. So there's a lot of a lot of memories here, a lot of work. And every summer before school would open for the first term, the schoolhouse would get a real cleaning. And lots of times they would re-varnish the floors. That was pretty common. Very so it was uh the little bench up here, I love that because that was where the students would come up and sit before the teacher and, and do their lessons, recite their lessons, so the teacher could see how well they understood them. And then she would assign another lesson for them and they would go back and, and work on that. And they would go through the grades. And we have found out in some of Mary and I's uh, travels around the county for history files that uh, there were schools where in the winter some of the uh, older students, I mean, there were young men there. Maybe, you know, their age was up into their 20s, but they really had a commitment. They wanted to learn more, and they maybe hadn't had the opportunity, maybe because their help was needed at home on the farm, that they only um, came as far as third or fourth grade, or maybe as far as eighth grade, but they really wanted to continue their education as much as they could, and so they came back to school. So that would have been quite a range in the age of students, between uh, the six-year-olds up to people that were maybe 25. That was quite a range. And some of these schoolhouses had a big student enrollment. Uh, one of those schools, I think it was up in, in Hale, North Branch, had over 80 kids. Of course, again, like I say, they didn't all probably show up at the same time, but if they had, that would have been a lot of kids to manage. So you gotta hand it to those old <laughs> one room school teachers. They were very capable ladies. And one thing Mary and I might have to do at some point is we'll have to take a, a history files where we actually drive back up into the town of Franklin and see where the school was located and uh, what, where the neighborhood was. Because that part of the county, as I recall from my days of working out of uh, the NRCS office in, in Black River, there were some uh, real hilly coolies there with a lot of wetland, but there had been a lot of families farming there at one time. And today there's maybe only one or two families, if, if that. But this was a time when everybody was farming, it seemed like, and had cows and big family of children. Here is something else that the kids find interesting. It's, a, it's an old dictionary where you can come up and look up your words. You know, a lot of kids now, they don't really, they, they use a dictionary. It's probably on the computer. It's 
called Google. Yep, we Google the words. This is the actual old uh, dictionary, and it's leather bound. Small print. <laughs> have to get my glasses out if I was going to read this a lot. I do not. I'll have to look and see. Hold this. Hold that for a minute, and I'll see if it's in here. If it says anything. This is 1890. So do you think Corona's in there? Corona? <laughs> well, it had other meanings than uh, disease, I guess. <laughs> so we do have a lot of, you know, we had a lot of books that got uh, donated. All these old music books. I, there's people that remember their uh, music that they had here. A lot of times the one-room school teacher was uh, she had to do some kind of music. Sometimes she had to play, be able to play the piano or at least to lead the kids in, in singing and songs. So she had to be multi-talented. Uh, and dealing with all those different ages. Yep, yep. But they always, other people always said that the thing about the students in these schools was they did help each other. You know, the, the older kids would help the younger kids, and they were a big group, like a big family, I guess. And they, they did have fun events at these schools. They had Christmas programs that were huge productions. And they said lots of times the teachers were actually, um, you know, graded on, on how well their Christmas program was. That was a big deal. They would put up a stage and everybody would crowd in there and lots of times they would have a Christmas tree and before electricity they would have ones with candles on it that at a certain time would be lit with somebody standing there with a pile of uh, or with a pail of water just in case. <laughs> so they would have that lit just for a few minutes so everybody could ooh and awe ah at it. But the Christmas programs were a big deal. And then at the end of the year, they would have the school picnic before everybody got out for the summer. And again, people said that was a big deal. They said everybody in the neighborhood came, even the hired men. So uh, they had a lot of fun. And they had other things going on at the schools too. They would have you know, spelling bees and recitations. They would have box socials and, and uh, reasons for people to get together. So uh, it was used for a lot of different things. And some uh, neighborhoods, it was actually used for parochial school or for church services. So like I said, there wasn't a real big, uh, uh, you know, separation of church and, and state really wasn't something that people worried about a whole lot. I don't think there's different odds and ends. These are these um, School directories that came out or put out every year, usually by the county superintendent. And that would be a listing of all the schools and where they were in the county. Oh. Yeah. Flashcards. <laughs> Everybody likes going. You remember flashcards? Yeah. Find a surprise. Ooh. What is that now? This is this book of scandal, The Human Body and Its Health. I wonder what they have to say about that from this time period, huh? Yeah, well, maybe it didn't get real detailed. Well, you stay healthy or you get sick and die. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much it, I suppose. But that, that too, that was a subject, you know, kids were supposed to learn about hygiene, yeah. you know, keeping clean and, and uh, a lot of those places it wasn't easy when you didn't have running water and you were dealing with large families and livestock. And, and frozen winter water. Yeah. So they would discuss health and hygiene. It was also a subject. And we've tried to put out some of these books from different ages. Some of them are, here's the old spelling book. 
This is old spelling book, Harrington's Spelling Book. And I'm going to see if I could find a date on here. But, uh, and that was back when they taught penmanship. Yes. Yes. So here's the different lessons. We had to learn how to spell. Beautiful book. Yeah. And how to write it. Yeah. And what was this one? This was Complete Arithmetic. Cool. Open yeah. That one up. Oh, look at right there it is. Yeah. Jimmy Sagan. Sagan, okay. S A G E. Gelsville, Wisconsin. Yeah, Sagan. And does it say what year that was? 1874. Yeah, it's an old one. Oh, word problems. <laughs> Look at that, Nancy. It's all word problems. Yeah. Now here's an important one. <laughs> Robert's Rules of Order. Oh, that's a book that... Uh, we all should read. Yeah, especially if you're on like a committee or... A committee or a board. Yeah, yeah. yep. That's how to uh, conduct a meeting without getting into a, a hissy fit. <laughs> fist fight. A fist fight, hair pulling. Yes, Robert's Rules of Order. That's so ironic, isn't it? Yeah. Now this one, friends and neighbors, this would have been... I'm thinking this like from the 40s and 50s, maybe. Up and down Pleasant Street. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's about town kids, isn't it? It's about Jill and Anne. Anne. Yeah. Now let's see what year were Jill and Anne playing. 42. Yeah. Down here, 1942. Animal Friends. Friends dear to God. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah. And I know, I was a country kid, and when I had to read those Dick and Jane books, remember Dick and Jane and Sally and Spot? Yep. I always thought, these kids, you know, they're really spoiled. Do they ever have to do chores? No. <laughs> All they have to do is play and run. I know it. Run, Dick, run, you know. They had a dog, and that was it. I didn't like them. So Mary, this is a real gem, and when Laurie Mahoney and I first started kind of redoing the schoolhouse and trying to make it look more like a one-room schoolhouse and not just a repository for a lot of odds and ends, this was up against the wall, and uh, it had a lot of boxes and, and stuff around it, so we had no idea what was in it. But when we finally cleaned and got rid of a bunch of things and got to it, and we pulled it out from the wall and we opened it. And what we found was absolutely amazing, kind of a one of a kind. All these beautiful maps. And what kind of maps are they, Nancy? Well, they're from all around the world and they actually have, what do they call it when you can actually feel like? Relief. The relief map, bas relief, I think. So that kids could actually see here. Like, here's Africa. Okay, it's flat where the Sahara Desert is, but there are mountains. And, and uh, it just was in beautiful shape. The door was banged up. And uh, Ruby Gertler, who was a classmate of mine, he fixed the door. And this is really, uh, nobody's ever seen anything like this. And it would have been very expensive. We don't know where it came from or what school it would have been in but it's, it's truly a treasure. So I'm sure it got shipped up to Trempolo County perhaps on a train somewhere. But uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Even, even the, the edges of it, the framing, it was in perfect shape. Quite a find. It was, it, it really is unique. We're, we're very lucky to have something like this. So during the fair, we'll, we'll maybe pull out a, a couple of, of these uh, every day so kids can actually look at it. But nobody has ever seen anything like this, so it is pretty unique. And it's made by the Atlas School Supply Company of Chicago. 1907?
And on top of here, Mary, here's something that I know you'd find interesting. These, I don't know what they are, some kind of a rock anyway. It looks like a part of a meteor almost. Yeah. <laughs> With iron. Yeah? Iron in them. And there's a, a seashell, the kind that you're supposed to be able to hear the ocean in. What does it say? That this was donated again by uh, the Wades. I'm not really certain who they were, but they contributed quite a bit. And even just this map case is Yeah, beautiful. and it's beautiful. I know. It, it's quite the work of art. Okay. And we were saying the things that the kids, when they come in here to see the school, some of the things that really fascinate them, uh, they like these old uh, record players. This one, of course, was plug-in electric, but this one, I believe, it played cylinders and you had to wind it up. Yep, and there was this... Thomas would, Edison, trademark. You would slide the cylinder on here yeah. and then there was the crank, crank handle. Yeah, yeah. And then you would press a button or do something, and it would. Yeah, there was a there was a needle here that, as it spun around, would you know play the music. Yeah. Pretty amazing. And we talked about uh, the lighting. A lot of the schools weren't electrified. If they were electrified, sometimes it would have been late in the '40s. So some of the schools that stayed open for it quite a while maybe had electricity, but most of them would have been lit by these uh, the old kerosene lamps. And again, we talked about all around here we have pictures of the different schools, and we've tried to get as many pictures as we, we could get. We have remounted them. We have laminated a lot of these pictures. And we try to have as many identifications on there. People love to come in here and look at these pictures. A lot of them will say, well, look, you know, there's Aunt Irene or, the, or there's Cousin Oscar in this picture. <laughs> so they have a lot of fun. Um, we're kind of running out of wall space here. So we are hoping to get some of those uh, wall-mounted swinging panels. that kind of opens like a book almost that we could put some of these pictures in, especially the ones that we've had to mount down below, because I know if you're older and have creaky knees, it might be hard to get down there and actually uh, look at some of these pictures. So we've got uh, a want list. And almost all of these pictures are on the trempolocountyhistory.org website. So they have been digitized. So if something terrible happened here, there are copies. That's a kind of insurance, I guess. Now, and behind you, Mary, music was always, you could say, an important thing in the school. And the teacher was supposed to have some musical ability. Now, this is an old pump organ. Probably most schools would have had a, uh, a piano if they had anything at all. And for this, you have to pump it. If you want to get sounds, you've got to work for it. <laughs> Hold the keys up so you've got to build up pressure. This one. See if you can get a little pressure. <laughs> there. So it probably was a real art to play this. Look, they had all the little stops and things. Some of them say bass coupler, yeah. sub Coral. bass, harp. This is harp aniline. Hey, this was a, a, oh. ahead of its time. <laughs> kind of like the... Uh, you know, the computer-generated music you get now with all the effects. Only this one, you really had to physically work for it. So um, uh, over here, where we have the map pulled down, won't fall over. A lot of people remember the maps being pulled down, and the teachers said that they would do that so kids could 
look over there and then see what the world you know, actually looked like. Now, underneath here, Vivian Grant, who was uh, taught for many, many years in many different rural schools, she had written down what a daily schedule would be like. And we've tried very hard to preserve this, but we've always worried that somebody's going to erase it or something bad is going to happen. So this year, I uh, took pictures of it, and then I sent off and had these laminated posters made. So uh, just in case something happened, we wouldn't lose this. We do have a, we do have a record of what the daily schedule would have been like, and it was, it was very ambitious. It said 9 o'clock was the opening with music, and then at 9, 10 minutes later was arithmetic, arithmetic for classes 7 through 8, and then 10 minutes later reading for class 1, another 10 minutes and reading for class 2 and onward during the day. So that was, uh, that was a pretty uh, ambitious schedule. And when you had all these kids of different ages and different abilities, that was, uh, I guess that those school teachers didn't have a lot of spare time during <laughs> the school day. And of course there was the recess and she was supposed to be out there making sure that uh, the kids were behaving and not beating up on each other. But nobody was getting their hair pulled. Right. So we're happy to have these laminated posters now. So like I say, it's just a little more insurance in case something would happen to the blackboard. And all the desks of varying sizes for the varying sizes of the students. Now they said that most kids back then didn't start school until they were six. Sometimes they came when they were a little younger, but usually they started when they were six. And for a lot of the school kids back then, if they went as far as eighth grade, that was considered quite the achievement, especially for the boys, because they usually were needed to be at home and working, especially on the farm. My uh, in-laws never went any farther than eighth grade. And that was just considered enough back then. Kids would know everything they needed, especially if they were working on the farm. And back in the earlier times, if kids went as far as third or fourth grade even, that was considered pretty good, pretty amazing. Now, we said this was the Lee School, and it was brought here to the fairgrounds in the 1970s. And it was located uh, not too far over the county line. It was actually in Jackson County. And I believe it was up in the town of Franklin. And it was in an area where today there aren't too many people and too many farms. But at that time, for a while there, there were a lot of people living back in there and farming. And they had some pretty big enrollments. Yeah, they had a large enrollment. Most of the kids would have been probably Norwegian descent. And a lot of kids, it was pretty common for them to come to school not speaking English. And they were supposed to pick it up at school because the parents maybe didn't speak English very well. And they certainly probably didn't speak it in the homes. So that was another thing that the rural teachers had to contend with. And that was having students that did not understand English. Now behind us here, too, we have the water. And there's the old phone. I don't even know where this phone came from. We're going to have to get it hung up, I guess. Here's another. Yeah, I don't know where this stuff came from. But uh, some of the schools did get telephones. A lot of them didn't. But that probably would have... It would have been unusual for them to have had uh, phones. A lot of them, some of them did get phones as far back as like 1910 or so. And over here, though, I got to show you this, Mary. This is kind of another gem that we found rolled up in a closet. And this is a 
uh, 19, or I'm sorry, 1877 Tucker map. It's one of the earliest like plat maps of Trempolo County that I've ever seen. And it has all the names of the landowners back in 1877. And they had some really good artists because they drew pictures of things like here's the Sumner Mills and uh, here's the home of so-and-so, Mr. Linderman up in uh, Sumner. They had business directories of the town. But these beautiful, I'm not sure if they were pencil or pen and ink drawings. Amazing. Just amazing. I think also that the people that went out and collected this information, apparently they had a hard time with some of the Polish and Norwegian names because some of the spellings that you see on here, if you look close, are like, oh my gosh, that's not, doesn't even look like uh, anything that was real, you know, <laughs> probably what they heard. But this is a real gem. And uh, people that are trying to find out where their ancestors live, maybe they can come in and look at this. And there are some more of these old Tucker maps around the county, not very many, but we, this one was actually just rolled up and it was in the, the uh, closet there, the broom closet. So we got it out and we took it down to West Salem and there was a company there that laminated it for us. And then we took it to Ron Reimer, who works out of the beach schoolhouse up in Beach Corner, and he mounted and framed it for us. So we'll switch sides. It is a beautiful. It's a gem. <laughs> it's a real gem. And there's there's Independence. Uh, Independence. There was the Markham Castle. They called it. We've seen that picture. Before. Yes, we have. And we guesstimate that's 121. Or Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that was, used to be the Lethe property, now it's a subdivision. Yeah. Looks really different, doesn't it? It's really different. <laughs> Lots of little micro homes going in there. Yeah. Maybe they're bachelor pads, you never know. Well, and this shows the uh, Arnold Farm. I mean, in all its glory. Look at there's an orchard and yes. the oats put up and wheat put up and stooks and the barn and yeah, I don't, there's no, we don't know who the artist was that did all these renditions, but uh, they were beautifully done and very precise. Real works of art. And that's Tremplo? This one is Osseo. Oh, it's Osseo. Big house, whoever it belonged to. Big house. Yeah. And then they have the little business directories on there as well. Stoddard Field. Yeah. And so, you know, there was some water damage and everything to it, but this is old. Oh, <laughs> Very God. old. you got to cut it a little yeah. slack. Yeah. And it wasn't coddled, like I say. It was just rolled up in the closet. I think that's like an old mimeograph. Yeah. You can see the letters. Yep. You remember that way that ink spelled? It had yeah. its own smell. Yes, it did. Cubbies. Yeah, nothing in there except brooms. But uh, Got any brooms? Yeah. Here's here's the rules for teachers, 1872. Uh, Teachers will uh, fill the lamps and clean the chimneys and trim the wicks and the old lamps. Each teacher will bring a scuttle of coal and a bucket of water for the day's use. After 10 hours in school, the teachers may spend the remainder of the time reading the Bible or other good books. Any teacher who smokes, uses liquor in any form, frequents pool or public balls or halls, or gets uh, shaved in a barber shop until uh, will give reason to suspect his worth, intelligence, integrity, and honesty. For them. this was for a, a male teacher. Women teachers who marry or engage in unseemly conduct will be dismissed. Men teachers may take one evening for courting purposes, 
or two evenings each week if they go to church regularly. And the teacher who performs his labors faithfully and without fault for five years will be given an increase of 25 cents in his pay, provided the Board of Education approves. And this sign was actually, they found this up in uh, Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls. So, and back then, a lot of the times the teachers, you know, back in the 1870s and that, the teachers were men and they liked to have men, especially for the winter terms, because that was when all the older boys would come to school. And some of these older boys were, you know, some pretty tough characters. So they liked to have men teachers. And I always thought it was interesting that they didn't want the, the woman teachers to be married. If you were got married, then you couldn't teach anymore. And that wasn't until after World War II when they really, you know, because so many of the men were away uh, in the military that they had to start letting some of these married teachers get in there and teach. And they found out it worked. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. So here's the school bell, and uh, they put it up for the fair out there, and people ring it, and I think the reason they bring it in is because uh, if it was up there all year round, uh, some people might be tempted to come and ring it maybe at an inappropriate time of the day, and keep the neighbors up. Or steal it. Yeah, although that's pretty heavy. <laughs> that would take some doing. <laughs> So was this actually taken off of a school? Yes, it was. I don't know where. Uh, maybe it came with this school. I don't know. But usually when they close the schools, these bells uh, either got donated somewhere else or they were sold for scrap. They didn't usually just leave them anyway. And something else some people might find interesting, Mary, is we have a bunch of the old school annuals, the old high school annuals. This is, uh, a lot of these are from Galesville and from Tremplo, and uh, it's just, just a whole lot of, I don't even know where they all came. I suppose maybe people had donated them, but there was a bunch of old annuals down here that people can look at. Here's the Keeley High School in Tremplo, 1958, and I find it's interesting that a lot of people today Forget that Tremplo had its own school system, its own high school, yeah. before it consolidated with uh, Yale Electric. So, like I said, we, Lori Mahoney and I tried very hard to uh, restore the school to looking like an actual one-room schoolhouse. And Lori's great, she's a very busy lady, but we did all the, the new painting in here. We did that, and we redid the floor in here ourselves. That was quite a job. And we do have uh, new windows, too, at least on the, um, let me get oriented here. I guess it would be on the east side. Yes. And we hope to eventually get the windows replaced on the west side as well. Because these were, I think the windows that were in there were original to the school, so they were pretty old. And they were getting cracks in them. It wasn't good.
And here's, yeah, kids could come in here and they could uh, touch themselves up and they had combs that were shared. <laughs> Are you saying I need to comb my hair, Nancy? No, not at all. But I can imagine back then that maybe another thing they had to contend with was head lice. lice. <laughs> Itchy hats. Yeah. You know, being as uh, I'm not out in front of the camera today, um, I don't need to worry about what my hair looks like, right, Nancy? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> These teachers made such a, a huge impression on their students that even when they were... These students were like in their 80s and 90s. They could still remember their uh, school teachers and just rattle off their names. They big impression. Viola Jacobson. Mm -hmm. And we've we've made note before that um, these school teachers were considered plum marriage prospects. Well, that's why they were hard to keep teachers. They were, because those young men, when they had a new teacher... That's probably the problem with the boys coming in in the wintertime. They were taking and getting rid of all the teachers. <laughs> Finding that, that's why the 20-year-olds came back to school. They were looking for a wife. <laughs> And the master gardeners, uh, a couple years back, they did some planting down here. And uh, at one point, it actually got mowed off, but we're trying to resuscitate it a little bit. One thing they did add were these, uh, I think they're boxes for pollinators. Yeah. This, and this has been a tough year for gardening uh, flowers with it being dry, but now that we've had a little more rain, maybe things will look a little perkier. You know what we need down here, Mary, are some of that great old um, uh, playground equipment that they used to have made out of like pipes and things. Yeah. <laughs> Terrific old slides and uh, swings and, and the merry-go-rounds. It twirled around and made a lot of kids throw up. Well, what's, what fun is the playground if somebody can't be puking? <laughs> <laughs> I, w I would love to know how they actually moved this uh, schoolhouse down here. Because, you know, it's an old school. That must have been quite the undertaking. So this pretty much um, concludes our tour here today of the one-room schoolhouse down here at the Trumpel County Fairgrounds, the old Lee School, which is a repository for a lot of memories. Oh, Nancy, so much work goes into taking care and maintaining and filling the school up with such wonderful, wonderful artifacts, as I'd call them. It's never ending. It's just never ending. There's a lot of upkeep because it's really old, but um, uh, the fair board helps us out and there's other people and it's fun. The kids love it. Well, and a lot of things were donated. Yes. And so if you've got a little something to add, um, get a hold of someone down at the extension office mm -hmm. or someone on the fair board. and. You know, a little bit of our school history is so important. Yeah, it is fun. And I'm watching because the dog is trying to, <laughs> she's trying to chase the bees on the time, and she just jumped back. So. <laughs> I think she got a little stinger. And what I find so ironic is those little slates. Oh, the kids love those. The kids love those. Yeah. And you know what? Now they all have little iPads. Right, right. And so the concept of the little slate right. that you can write on and erase is still there. Absolutely. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so hope to see you all at the fair. Yep. And join us again next time on The History, History Files. Files.